Welcome to HDTV. You're now rocking with your boy. A little tired. What's going on? y'all enjoying the videos I hope y'all enjoying um, part one part two of 90 players better than the brownies I got 41 to 60 done I got part three done I just gotta know I just gotta figure out when I'm gonna drop it I might drop it tonight when I get off I'm gonna give you guys part three And it's going to be a list, a good list. Um, but I'm glad the people who've been coming on, Cash Rules, Terrell, you know, and others, man, who's out there, man, coming to support it. I'm glad they're enjoying it. Um, Christian, um... That was on, I'm sorry, man, what's going on in your life. And also, thank you, man. Um, I figured down, I figured she was going to, she was going to do that. That's what I'm thinking she's going to do. I, I figured that. But in the Loki series, I see why Owen Wilson is counterparted with um, Loki. Because his sarcastic, his sarcasticness, his sarcasm, excuse me, it fits going at Loki. He needs somebody who's just as witty, if not more witty, than Loki. Now, I'm all off base. We got the Atlanta Hawks. Versus the Bucks tonight. So, to me, this game, this series, the Bucks can win this series in five games. If the Bucks play smart basketball, they'll win in five, six at worst. But if they're not, if they're down the stretch, down the stretch, if they um, if they don't capitalize. They're in trouble. Nate McMillan is a great coach. Not a good one. He's a great coach. He knows how to adjust his players. He knows who to put in. He knows where to put guys at. This is the difference between him and Doc. He knows when to play his guys and he knows when not to play guys. Down the stretch, he's coaching. He's coaching Trey, telling him, yo, don't shoot no bad shots. Just move the ball. Collins I would put John Collins on Giannis and I would get physical with Giannis the whole game and if Giannis is about to dunk foul him I would foul Giannis a lot this series and put him on the line because they're going to give him the call. Giannis' weakness is he can't shoot free throws well. If the Bucks play inside and out, this series will be over in five. And if they take smart shots. We 
because a lot of times they take a lot of bad shots and it's like, man, these guys just don't know how to shoot the ball well at certain times of the game. And they don't try to. My thing is this. Is Brian Forbes and Connington going to stop Herter and um, Lou Williams? If Lou Williams and Herter get off this series, off the bench, Bucks are going to be in trouble. Forbes has got to play better and step up. Connington hit some big shots in game seven. So he played a hell of a game, but then he faded late. <laughs> and he settles for too many threes. Sometimes you got to put the ball on the floor. Them missing DiVincenzo is really hurting them because DiVincenzo, what he does is he changes the pace of the game. He can slash to the hole, and it opens up the floor a little bit, and he can shoot the three. It opens up the floor, excuse me, from Giannis. Brooke Lopez is going to live from the three-point line. He'll be in the post a few times, but if you get physical with him, push him around, out-rebound him, Kevin Durant was giving him the business. <laughs> and he's a lot bigger than Durant. Durant was locking him down. So all he's going to do is try to step out and shoot a three. That's what he wants to do. He, you know, he plays like a, a Euro player, but he's not. Um... Atlanta plays great on the road. This is going to be dangerous for the Bucks because the Hawks could take game one. Now, their legs may fade late because they didn't have no rest, but the Bucks are going to but the Bucks the Bucks are going to be tired too coming into this series. So both teams could really steal game one because they both are coming off of game sevens. These are going to be some, some good series. But the Bucks should win in five, if not six at worst. That's where I got it at. Now, the Clippers play the Suns. I think they play tomorrow night. I'm not sure they play tonight. But I think they play tomorrow night. Um, Kawhi Leonard, I think, is done for the whole playoffs. I don't think he's coming back, so... Now, what you have to do is your supporting cast has to step up because Paul George isn't that guy. He's not going to take the game over. Um, I believe um, I believe that people are saying, well, he, was, he didn't have a, a boot or anything on. He didn't need a boot on. He hurt his knee. <laughs> didn't have no cast on and I'm like okay that's normal to not have a cast on because he's still getting probably looked at he's probably trying to get a second or third opinion to make sure it's okay but he's walking around just trying to test the weight I know because I tore my knee before and I didn't have no brace or nothing on or anything I was just walking and I tore two-thirds of my knee. My knee was worse than what Kawhi says. So, that's what I'm saying. You guys can't jump. You guys got to stop jumping to conclusions thinking somebody's scared. Or d nobody's scared. Nobody's ducking. Nobody's nothing. He's fine. <laughs> Kawhi Leonard is hurting right now. And they're trying to get a second and third opinion. Plus, you don't want to re reveal that he's out for the season because you're going to mess up the ratings. Skip already effed up by saying it with his bum ass. Don't worry. Skip and Nick wrong. I got a video coming for you guys. For real. I 
I got a video coming for both of y'all. Um, especially you, Gonzo. You talking about the Lakers had injuries too. I'm going to show you that the Lakers had a better talented team out there than what Brooklyn had out there. And y'all had a better coaching staff. Because I'm tired of Gonzo talking. We going to talk about Gonzo. We going to talk about him. Might be tonight. After I do the um, 41 um, part 3. Of 90 players better than LeBron. The Brownies might be a top 100, dog. Now that I'm looking at my list, because 61 to 80, that list is going to have people like, whoa, okay. What the Clippers got to do, you have to play as if Kawhi is going to come back. Just keep playing. I believe the defense of Terrence Mann on Devin Booker, I like that. Booker hit some, he just hit some tough shots on him. He hit some good shots on him, but you got to keep pressuring Devin Booker. You got to pressure him. And then what's also is Aiden. You know, you guys got to play Boogie a little more. Zubak a little more. Um, you can't be leaving guys open. But their legs got tired at the end of the game because they, they just played a long game. They got they got off of game six. Phoenix was already done before them. So they so I understand. I understand why um they faded late. And it's understandable. Because um their legs were dead. But they've got to rotate. They've got to communicate. I would, I would bring Boogie. I would have Boogie close the game, along with um, with um Rondo and Reggie Jackson and Paul George. And you could have a tomb in there if you want. Because this series is going to come down to you can't let Phoenix get hot. <laughs> you can't let Phoenix get to their spots and, and shoot. All these guys can score from different areas. Aiden is an old school center. He's going to kill you down low. He's going to post move you. He's going to hook shot. He can fade away on you. He can also get the rebounds on you. Aiden is a man child. <laughs> he don't play now, Devin Booker is going to be a handful. But Chris Paul is not playing. Like we said before, they don't need Chris Paul. Cameron Payne is playing some of the best point guard off the bench I've seen in a while. bench just just kill it like that so 
so they got to slow him down. They can't let him come in the game and do what he does. And that's what was killing him. But, um, I still think Clippers can win this series. And the reason why is they have a bench. They have a, they have a good starting unit and bench unit. Ty Lue just has to not fall asleep and rotate guys in there. Don't be afraid to coach. Shout out to Chauncey Billups, because Chauncey Billups is, is getting them guys in position to win. This team could be like, to me, and I'm going to tell you, everyone may laugh at me. Um, Detroit team may disagree with me, but I think this team could be the 0-4 Detroit Pistons. With Chauncey at the point, but you got Reggie in them. I'm not saying Reggie's Chauncey, Detroit. <laughs> don't, don't, don't bite my head off, because I know he like this. Listen, man. <laughs> Listen, man. Duh. Uh -uh. But I'm just saying they could, because that Detroit team was deep. And I told everybody they they would win. I they would win the championship if they could get one more piece. I kept telling everybody that the whole time. And when they got Rasheed Wallace, I remember I said, "Oh, they winning the championship because I'm a huge Rasheed Wallace fan. That's my guy. <laughs> I was a huge Rasheed Wallace fan. I was a fan of his like forever. The Marcus Cousins." DeMarcus Cousins' temperament is like Rasheed Wallace-like. But Rasheed was more skilled than um, DeMarcus was. But um, that's what I'm saying. Like, you got a team, man. Your, your team is straight. You guys could play like the Pistons did. Just play defense, do what you do. Paul George has got to play with better decision-making. Paul George got the talent. Like, his talent has never been a question. It's never been a question of how great um, he has been or ever has been. The problem is Paul George mentally. How can he mentally keep the game? Terrence Mann, give the ball to Terrence Mann when it's the closing seconds of the game. Terrence Mann, when it's under five minutes, plays some of the best basketball of anybody, and he hits a lot of big shots. You have got to get him the ball in the clutch. You got to. You got to get him the ball. You got to get Reggie. You got to get these other guys the ball. Reggie has been your MVP for the whole playoffs for the Clippers. He's been the MVP. Kawhi's been balling. Kawhi's been Kawhi's the superstar. He's the centerpiece. But but the but the MVP has been Reggie. Reggie's been saving. Him. But Reggie can't go full retard mode. He got to play the game. You got to play the game right. You know, you got to play within yourself. See, that's the thing about today's players. They don't play within themselves. They don't play like the old school players. You know? But um, I still think the Clips can win this series in seven. I think they can win it in seven because I don't think Kawhi's coming back. I think Kawhi's done for the playoffs. And I think the Clippers are going to go off guts and glory and they're going to win. That's what I feel like. I just got a feeling. <laughs> but if they lose, hey, man, shoot. Let's give it to the Suns. Devin Booker gets his first ring. That's amazing. Like I said, this has been a great playoffs. This has been the best playoffs in a lot of years. We've watched the Hawks come back from 20, almost 30 down, two games in game five and then game seven to win the series. That's what I'm saying. The Hawks are mentally tough. The Hawks are a team, if you drop a nuclear bomb on them, the motherfuckers like roaches. They just get out of it and then just come together and they still creating havoc. So that's what I'm saying. You can't count the Hawks out. Because the Bucks down the stretch play so goddamn stupid. That's why I know if the Nets would have had Kyrie out there, they would have beat them. They would have beat the Bucks. Next year come Brooklyn, definitely finna win. That's why, and I told Germ, shout out to my brother Cool Beans. 
I told Germ, I said, Germ, I told you, and I told Kraken. I said, dog, I don't believe the Nets going, I think they'll get to the semis at worst, the conference. That's why I tell all these idiots, they trying to tell me, oh, man, well, you know, the, um, the, the Nets lost, ha-ha. I'm like, yeah, they lost, bitch. <laughs> I know why they lost. I didn't even pick them because I didn't trust KD coming off of that injury. And it showed that he's coming off of that injury because he just did not, he was tired. Steve Nash don't know how to fucking coach. I told you guys this. He don't know how to rotate players. He didn't know how to adjust. That's the thing about the game. See, you guys don't understand. Michael Jordan back in the day, you guys want to heap all this praise on Mike did this, Mike did that. Mike had a team of guys who played their role. They played their role. They stepped up when it was time to. Cool Coach stepped up. Rodman stepped up. Kerr stepped up. Um, Ronald Brown off the bench, who was a nobody, but he stepped up at times. You had different guys. Like, Cool Coach was just was just a terror coming off the bench, being almost 6'10", 6 6'11", 6 able to handle the ball like he do. I think he might have been 6'7", six, 6'8". Six, I'm not sure. But he was a tall, lanky on white boy. But his problem was he only could go left because he's a true left-hander. But, um... But, um, yeah. But, um, yeah, and everything. And that's that's how I feel it'll go. Um, if Milwaukee, if Milwaukee plays like they're supposed to inside out, I got them in five. But if they are playing stupid like they did against the Nets, like down the stretch, I got them winning in seven. It's going to take seven games. Drew Holiday has not had a, a good playoffs, but in the clutch, you could tell he's a hundred times better than Eric Bledsoe, and he is. Um, and Giannis is growing up. Giannis, stay going inside late. Your shot, fuck that shot. If you could get to the basket, get to the basket. Use your skill set. And then work on your free throws. While, while you're not playing right now, you should have been shooting at least 100 damn free throws or something. You should have been practicing that. But I know you haven't. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. These ball players today, man, they could not have survived back in the day when we played. They could not have survived in the 80s and 90s. These guys' game is so limited. It's like, man. And then a lot of these players' core... Their core is very weak because they're always falling to the ground or they're always hurting shit. I don't even understand that, man. But um, thank you for listening. Um, like, comment, subscribe, share this. Hit the notification bell to select all to receive um, upcoming notifications. And if you um, and if you like what you hear. You can donate to the page by cash apping me at the word welcome, the number two, and then HDII TV. Thank you all for listening and thank you all for supporting the page, my brothers and sisters. We are out. Deezy!